Hey guys, Jackson Savvy here. Today's Windows 10 tutorial is going to cover how to make a Windows 10 installation USB. Now, use case scenario. In my case, this is coming about because I'm wanting to do a virtual machine. And I want a fresh Windows 10 install on it. So we'll jump right into it here. Uh, to start out with, go ahead and go to your internet browser. And just type in download Windows 10. In your list of results, you'll see the first one for download Windows 10 disk image file. That one will do just fine. And you might have some ads if you don't have ad blocker on, so look for that one. Once you get to this screen, you know that's the right one. You'll see the Microsoft logo at the top left. And we're going to see a couple different options here. And it'll give you the whole rundown of how to use the tool for different purposes. But we're going to start out with just hitting download tool now. This is going to be a really small download, a media creation tool. You'll see it down here. So let's go ahead and open that. Now at this point, you want to make sure you've got a USB drive that's got at least 8 gigs on it. And it's going to wipe the whole thing, so make sure you don't have anything important on it. And we'll go through the getting a few things ready phase, where Windows will kind of look at what all it needs, get all its agreements together. Scroll down through those. You're welcome to read them if you want. Once you accept the agreement, it'll continue and to get a few things ready. Now at this point, it's going to ask you what you're wanting to do. Because with this tool, you can do what's called an in-place upgrade. Which, let's say you had Windows 10 Home and you wanted to go to Pro. You could upgrade it from right here without having to wipe everything. And you can also use it just to kind of do a fresh slate. But in this case, we're wanting to create installation media onto a USB flash drive. Now this flash drive, as long as you've got a key for it, you can install Windows 10 on as many devices as you want, but you'll have to have a valid key for each one. In my case, I won't be needing a key because it's just a virtual machine to mess around with. And it'll give you the option if you want to use the recommended options for the PC you're on. In my case, I've got a 64-bit processor, so it automatically detected the 64-bit architecture. Now if you uncheck this, you can usually change your options here. You can make one that will install both architectures and you need to change the language. So in this case we're just going to be using the recommended options and if you're not sure if you have a 32 or 64-bit, just come down to your start button, click it, type in the word system, and when you see the one that says system control panel, just click that and you'll see right away, right here under system type, it'll show you x64 or x86. Uh, x86 is 32-bit, x64 is 64-bit. 64 Most people nowadays have 64-bit. A lot of workstations still have 32-bit operating systems, so we'll go ahead and hit next. And you can actually download just the ISO file. But in this case, we're going to be doing a USB flash drive. And it tells you right there it needs to be at least 8 gigs. I've got a 64 gig one in right now. So we'll hit next. And if you've already got it plugged in, make sure to go to your file explorer. And if you want to make sure what the volume label is, Look for whatever the name of your USB drive is in the drive. In my case, it's just named USB drive, and it's G. So we know G is the correct place. We'll hit next. Now, this is where it'll take care of downloading, installing, doing all that good stuff. So I've got a really fast connection, but in either case, I'll probably speed up the video a bit here. At this point, the download's done. It's going to verify everything it downloaded to make sure there's no errors or anything like that because that can totally ruin your USB drive as far as an installation media if it has any errors. So let it run through, uh, verify, and then it'll start creating it on the flash drive. Now, as far as uh, how you actually use this, if you're wanting to install it on a different system, doing a fresh install, 
you'll boot to it from your BIOS, which there's plenty of tutorials out there and every BIOS is a little different depending on whether it's HP, Dell, your own system that you've built. However, you get into the BIOS and then allow it to boot from the external media, such as USB. A lot of times you can just hit F12 or delete and change your boot options, and that's how you would boot into this. Like I said, in my case though, it'll be for a virtual machine. So I'll probably go ahead and make a video of that as well on how you can install a virtual machine and link it back to this video. Okay guys, and one thing to remember too uh, that I haven't mentioned yet is if you'll notice, it didn't let me choose between Home and Pro. Now during this install, uh, Pro only has a few extra features of Home. So it's going to look in your BIOS, it's going to look at any previous installations to try to determine what you had before, whether it's a Home or Pro version of Windows 7, 8. Now if you're doing a clean install, uh, your key is going to determine what you get. So let's say this creates a Windows 10 Home installation. Now you will complete that install from the USB. Once it's done, the key that you put in will automatically trigger Microsoft to say, oh, hey, this is Pro. We need to get some additional features or this is home and we're good. So don't worry too much about that step of it. There are additional little hacks you can do to force it, but uh, really everything's built in. So don't concern yourself too much on which edition you're getting because it'll get taken care of in the end. Okay guys, and it says it's finally ready to go. So we'll hit finish. And it'll do any kind of cleanup it needs to, which is pretty quick. Now, don't get discouraged watching the video because it is sped up. It took a good probably 10 to 15 minutes on mine, even with a high-end system to do it, maybe a little less. But in the end, when you go into your uh, file manager and you select your flash drive, now you should see the boot, EFI, sources, auto run, and these other three right here. Now, the trick is here, if we wanted to do something from within the system, like an in-place upgrade, we could just double-click right here on Setup and start running this right away. But in this case, uh, if you're going to be using it on another system, you just want to kind of verify, take a look that those files are there. Now, whenever you boot into your other system and you boot into this flash drive, if for any reason it doesn't recognize when you're trying to do an install, uh, you can change it over from UEFI to Legacy in the BIOS to make it uh, look at the, for this USB. So that's about it, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll try to get to them. If you like the vid, leave a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Appreciate it, guys.